lesson five is linear approxi approximation. And the gist of this is basically being able to use a tangent line to approximate a point very close to the tangent point. Okay. So again, we're writing a lot of tangent lines and using that to help us. So um, unit two, we briefly looked at the idea of local linearity. When zooming in on a function, we discovered as we zoom in, the straight line that appears at a given point has a slope equal to the derivative. And the equation for the tangent line at the given point was defined. Now, this whole f of x equals f of a plus f prime of a times x minus a, you realize that's a fancy form of point slope form? That right there is basically the same thing as saying y equals, and I'm going to say y1 plus m times x minus x1. Okay, so our variation of point slope form that we're using this year, I should say. Um, except that normally we put the y1 at the end. Realize it could be at the beginning just the same. Okay, so... Okay, so tangent line approximation. Suppose f is differentiable at this point A, then for values of x near the tangent line. Okay, right there. That is our equation of the tangent line. And what that's saying is that they, anything on the tangent line is very close to the actual point, just not exactly. And so you will notice it's f of x is approximately equal to. Okay, um, when we look at this visual down example one, it'll help to make a little more sense there. If you consider that point A is fixed and these other two pieces are constant, then you'll see this notation a lot where we talk about f of x is approximately. So the actual function value is approximately equal to this linear approximation, which we're going to use L of x to stand for the linear approximation. Um, we will also talk about linear approximation error. There's some questions about error today. And the idea is... <laughs> I can't even focus with that. <laughs> okay. The idea with error is the error is how far is the approximation from the exact answer. And that's what we're going to talk about how close are, you know, how much our error of error we have, and we'll also talk about percentage error. Okay, so let's look at this example because I think this picture will kind of help me to be able to explain something. Okay, you're going to be shown that the best linear approximation of f near to a is the tangent line. Label the true value of f of x, the tangent line, and the approximation. So first of all, understand the curve there. This curve right here, is representing the function f of x. Okay, I need you to understand all the pieces of this graph. So that curve is my function in question. So then what's the straight line? This is our tangent line. And that is the tangent line at point A, right? So this right here is point A. So it's tangent to the graph at point A. What we have here, so if we're talking about some value x, okay, if we're talking about some value x, on the curve right here, that's going to be the exact value. So if you take that x value, and plug it back into the actual equation that, I don't know, is that a parabola maybe, whatever it might be, this right here is going to represent the exact value. Okay? Because that's the point actually on the curve. That is our exact value or true value. Why isn't point A exact? What? Why isn't point A exact? Well, A is exact value, too, but when we're using this linear approximation, we're doing it for points very close to A. In other words, if we have the information about A, we wouldn't be finding a linear approximation at A. So like right here, this case of A, that's an exact value. That's also the tangent line because it's tangent at point A. 
we're talking about a point that is different than point A. Okay, so a point that is close to A right here, that's going to be the exact value. Now, the linear approximation, what value is the tangent line going to give for that point? And that is that right there. That is my linear approximation. That's the value the tangent line will give you for that point very close. So this is my linear approximation value. We'll label the true value, the tangent line, the approximation. We've labeled all of that technically. Okay. One or two other things I want to point out. So when we talk about the error, okay, what is the error of this linear approximation? The error is going to be the difference between the exact value and the linear approximation value, so the tangent line value. And so right up here, when it says error is absolute value of exact minus approximation, that's what that is. So that line right there in between, that is my amount of error. Okay? So the distance between those two points is my error. Now, one other topic, and I don't know if I'm necessarily going to write it down, but one of the things we're going to talk about throughout this lesson is, is our approximation, is it an underestimate or an overestimate of the actual value? Okay. As we look at this tangent line, where is my tangent line in this case in relation to my actual graph? The tangent line is below the graph, yes? Yes. So any points on the tangent line are going to be smaller than what would actually come out of the function value. So that means any answers in this particular problem would be underestimates because they're on the tangent line that is below the graph. Okay, so that idea is important there. How much have we talked about concavity, concave up, concave down? We, we talked about it. We talked about at least a teensy bit. But the idea of concave up is something that is bold up, right? So like concave up, well, that's concave up, right? But besides concave up, that's concave up, right? It's because it's bold up, okay? The curve is facing up. Um, this is concave up. All of these are concave up because their curves are facing up, as opposed to actually concave down. Well, there's concave down because my curve is facing down. Okay. Um, that's concave down because my curve is, the inside of the curve is down below it. I don't know exactly a better way, you know, is that, are we okay with that idea of concave up versus concave down? Okay. And so one of the big things we'll talk about is because this graph is concave up, that's how I know my tangent line is down below it. Because anytime you have a concave graph, concave up graph, my tangent line is going to be outside of it. It's going to end up down below it. Whereas any tangent lines on concave downs are going to end up above it. Well, that wasn't, you know, they're always going to end up above it, if that makes sense. As opposed to these, that will always end up below it. Okay? So just some helpful understanding. We're going to talk about that, but I kind of want to mention it right now so that the more I mention it, maybe the more it will sink in. Okay. So, 
if your head is spinning with this new information. Let's hope not, but I don't know. I may have sent it there. We're going to summarize what we're going to focus on for this lesson, which is our linear approximation. Um, so we're going to be asked to write linear approximation for f of x centered at a given value, whether it be c, a, whatever. And then you can use that to approximate values that are in the neighborhood. It doesn't work if the given value is 2 and you're trying to approximate for 10. That's not how this works. This is, okay, given value is 2, you're trying to approximate for 2.1. Or, you know, something very close there. Okay? Maybe a little farther out than that. But, I mean, close. Okay, so, first of all, we're going to write the point-slope form of the tangent line. So, we'll write our tangent line. Thus, I said, been there, done that, right? We know how to write tangent lines. We're going to isolate Y, which we will have already done, and rename this as L of X. L of X standing for linear approximation. So it is slightly, it's not going to be the same as the actual function. Um, in order to find the linear approximation, we'll substitute our value. Okay, we'll substitute our value in. And notice, if you look in the official answer keynotes, right? Every single problem practically, you're going to see this notation. The idea saying f of x is the official function, right? And it is approximately equal to the linear approximation, which is our tangent line. So, you know, if it's tangent at point 2, but we use 2.1 in our linear approximation, how, okay, it's going to be close but not the same as the actual function. So you'll see that notation a lot. Um, I just kind of gave you a heads up on the whole overestimate, underestimate thing. You know, the idea that if my graph is concave up, there's a concave up graph. Well, my tangent line is going to lie below. So my it's underestimation because that is below. As opposed to concave down, there's a concave down. Well, my tangent line is going to end up being above. So that's going to be an overestimation. Um Let's see, when finding error or accuracy in an approximation, we'll use the calculator. We'll find the difference, the absolute value of the difference between the exact amount and your approximation. And then we'll talk about, when we talk about error, it'll be stating less than 10 to some power, 10 to some negative power, where that power is the number of zeros in your result. For example, if my actual answer and my linear approximation were different by 0 0.000147, that error would be stated as the error is less than 10 to the negative third because there are one, two, three zeros there. It's based on the number of zeros that, you know, we have there. And then if you need to find a percentage error, which we'll do a little bit, um, exact minus approximate over exact, you can multiply that decimal by 100 to get your percent. Okay? So, there's some information. Let's put it to work. The function f is twice, dif twice differentiable, where f of 3 is negative 2, f prime of 3 is 5, f double prime of 3 is 1. Write the equation of the tangent line, then use the equation to find the value of f of 3.1. Okay, f of 3 equals negative 2. What does that tell me? If f of 3 equals negative 2, that's telling me the point is 3, negative 2, yes? What does f prime of 3 equals 5 tell me? The what? Yeah. The slope of the tangent line is 5, right? Can that be 5 when x equals 3? No. Yes. Yeah. The slope of the tangent line, so we're doing the slope of the tangent line at x equals 3. 
or we're just we're talking about the tangent line at x equals three because all the information they give us is at x equals three. Okay, f double prime of three equals one. How much have we talked about this? I'm not sure. Um, What's the second derivative tell us? First derivative tells us the slope, increasing or decreasing. Second derivative tells us concavity. Have we talked about that much? We talked about it a little bit. That must come up in unit five then, because we really have not talked about concavity. Oh, it does come up. Yep, I see it there. Okay, so we'll talk about that in unit five. But that's just telling me that a positive second derivative is going to be concave up. Now, that's not really mentioned a lot today, but you know, like if your first derivative is positive, it means my graph is increasing because I have an increasing slope. If my first derivative is negative, my graph is decreasing because I have a decreasing slope. Well, if my second derivative is positive, that means concave up. If my second derivative is negative, that means concave down. I feel like we briefly hit on that once, very, very brief, maybe? I don't know. I don't remember okay. That. So I'm going to go, with, and I'll say it's not a bunch in this lesson today. So it's not a huge stressor there. Okay. I'm more, do you understand the shape of concave up versus concave down? That's more where I'm at today. But I think that's the only reason I can figure out why the second derivative is in here, because otherwise, the second derivative is extra information. Okay. So I will say, you know, although now that I think about it, my picture here doesn't show concave up. Did I do my picture wrong? I don't know. Okay. We were asked to write the equation of the tangent line. Okay. Well, when I do my notation, I'm going to say f of x, so the actual equation, is approximately equal to my linear approximation, which is my tangent line. Okay, so linear approximation, tangent line, one and the same. What is this going to be? Slope of five times x minus the x value, so x minus three, and then, whoops, plus negative two, which would be minus two. Okay, that right there is your equation of the tangent line. Okay. Now, what they ask us to do? Then use the equation to find the value of f of 3.1. Now, when we're finding the value of f of 3.1, this is going to be an approximation because we're using the tangent line. Okay, this tangent line will find the exact value at 3, but everything else is going to be very close, but not exact. So when I plug in 3.1, 5 times 3.1 minus 3 minus 2. If you leave it in this form, it's not too bad to do without a calculator for this part. 3.1 minus 3 is... 0.1 times 5 is 0.5, and then 0.5 minus 2 is negative 1.5. So the approximate value of 3.1 is negative 1.5. It's not a precise value. It's an approximate value because it is our linear approximation. And you could leave that L of 3.1 in there too if you wanted to. Okay. And we don't have an actual function, so I could show you what the actual value is, but it would not be exactly negative 1.5 for the actual function. This is an approximation. Okay, um, linear approximations are going to do their job for estimating values, provided you stay in that small neighborhood, so you have to stay close. The farther away we move, the worse the approximation becomes. Um, 
We can predict the amount of air we talked about by using our formula there. Okay. Let's go into some actual examples. Not that that wasn't an actual example, but you know. Consider y equals sine x at x equals pi over 3. We know the corresponding or the ordered pair corresponding to this angle is 1 half comma square root of 3 over 2. So that's what we're talking about on the unit circle there, right? Okay. And basically, if we're talking about on the unit circle, that means that 1 half is your what value? Cosine. And square root of 3 over 2 is my sine. Okay, so that's just kind of reminder information there. Okay, since the angle pi over 3 is that lovely decimal, 1.04, let's write the lin linear approximation for 1.05. Okay, so in other words, we're going to find the tangent line at pi over 3, which is 1.04. The value very, very close to it that we're going to approximate is 1.05. And then we can actually look down here with the air and see how far off we actually are. Okay? So, let's start with, we need the information to write the tangent line, yes? So if we need the information to write the tangent line, let's see, I need a derivative, right? Sorry, my brain is, if y is sine x, What's the derivative of sine? Cosine x, right? And then if I want to evaluate this, y, the derivative evaluated at pi over 3, what is cosine of pi over 3? Cosine of pi over 3 is? One half. And if that is my derivative value, what is that? That's going to be my slope, right? So we're going to have a slope of one half. Um, and again, the ordered pair associated with this is given right here. Okay? So... Let's write our linear approximation. Just in general to begin with. So f of x is approximately equal to this linear approximation, L of x, which has a slope of 1 half times x minus, I'm going to do 1 half, plus square root of 3 over 2. That right there is our linear approximation, right? Now, what did they want us to find? The linear, linear approximation for 1.05. So the function at 1.05 is going to be approximately equal to the linear approximation at 1.05, which is one half, 1.05 minus one half, plus square root of three over two. No. Okay. What did I do? Ah, okay. Were you a little confused? You put the two parentheses. Well, even besides that. Get that extra parenthesis. Yeah, I don't know why I put the extra parenthesis there, but. Okay. 
momentary lapse of my brain here. This ordered pair was provided for reference into the fact that pi over 3 cosine and sine values. What is the ordered pair I should be plugging in to my tangent line? Does this make sense here? In other words, if I put in We need the ordered pair, and I goofed, I totally goofed this up. I'm sorry. We know the slope at pi over 3 to be 1 half, but what is the point at pi over 3? And so what is the sine of pi over 3? And sine of pi over 3 is the square root of 3 over 2. So the ordered pair that we're going to be using is pi over 3 square root of 3 over 2. Where did I mess that up? Yeah, because I, again, I just, I don't know. Am I making sense at all now? Sorry, I'm trying to recover. That's hard to do. Slope we had was one half. The ordered pair we should have been using is that right there. So then slope of one half, x minus, and my x value we're inputting is pi over three. And then plus the square root of 3 over 2. Now, to be honest, why did I notice this? Because when here, when I started putting this in the parentheses, 1.05 minus 1 half, that's not going to be very close in terms of what we're doing. And that's where I came to the realization that I had screwed up. So we're going to take that 1 half out there. That works. And that's actually supposed to be pi over 3. If you remember, pi over 3 was 1.047. So if you're doing 1.05 minus 1.047, that is very close, which is what I was supposed to say there. Okay, this is a calculator problem. That the, I mean, you know, this is plugging into the calculator to get the official value. I have that the estimate of f at 1.05, which is approximately equal to the linear approximation at 1.05 works out to be 0.867426. If your calculator lies to me, then man, I've got more mistakes. I've got to, or if your calculator disagrees, I've got more mistakes. I've got to figure out. Okay, so that right there is a linear approximation for 1.05. Let's talk about the error. Okay, the error of this is, okay, how far apart is the actual value from my linear approximation? My linear approximation is this 0.867 value. What's the actual value when you plug it in? And that's what we'll have to do on the calculator. So in order to find the error of my approximation, we're going to look at the actual value of f of 1.05 minus the linear approximation value. Now, the linear approximation value is that 0.867426. The actual value comes from doing what? Calculator, and that is taking 1.05 and putting it into where? And that's putting it into the sign, the original equation up here, the sine equation, because this up here was f of x. And so when I take that value and plug it in, I have 0.867423. To so on and so forth. It's very close, isn't it? Okay. If your calculators aren't doing it right, you have to be in radians. Sorry, physics people. At least the nice thing is you guys are all confused. You know, we all have this struggle together. As opposed to some of you being in physics and some of you not, which is usually what I have, so. Okay. 
Oh, and if I think about it, two years ago was was where the, I had the class of five boys, and they all went to physics right afterwards too. So. Okay, guys, so what does this math come out to be? Negative 0 0.000000277 is what I have written down in my notes. That's five in between. Five zeros between the decimal and that two. Okay? And that is my error. Now, officially, the error should be the absolute value of it. Okay, so I guess I didn't write that here, but officially. So when we talk about what is the error, okay, the error is less than 10 to the, how many zeros do we have between the decimal and the number? Five. So the error is less than 10 to the negative fifth. In other words, that error is really good in terms of very small amount of error. Okay. Curiosity based on what I've written here in my notes. My calculator might have given me a scientific notation answer. Did yours? Yes. Okay. And what scientific notation? It gave what? Negative 2.77 times 10 to the negative sixth. You understand why I wrote this? Because when we talk about that negative sixth, that's one, two, three, four, five, the sixth, the actual decimal goes right there, yes? So understand that when your calculator gives you a decimal answer, it's not giving, that negative six is not my amount of error, right? It's going to be one off from there. Are we better with that now? Okay. Questions here? And if I throw in a visual real quick, maybe I should, maybe I shouldn't, but I have the graph at X. I had the graph. The zoomed in piece of this graph looks something like this, okay? Just go with it. If that point is pi over 3, there's my tangent line, right? So there's my tangent line. If we're talking about what was our value? 1.05. Okay, so the idea here is that this is the difference here and that right here is my L of X, but here is my official F of X. And the distance between them is that our amount of error. Okay. I made some luck in explaining the relationship here today. I feel like I should be going through this a lot quicker, but I don't know. I guess I look at it, it took me a moment to comprehend what I was looking at, so. Okay. And notice my actual value is smaller than the tangent value. Notice my amount of error was had a negative difference, didn't it? So, okay, move it on. Four, find a linear approximation to y equals to the x at x equals three. Use the tangent line to estimate 2.97. Okay, linear approximation. Your brain needs to say, oh, I need to find a tangent line, right? So, in order to find the tangent line... I'm going to need to know what y equals 2 to the third is. And y equals 2 to the third is 
8. So that tells me I'm going to have an ordered pair of 2 8. Nothing fancy there. I also need a derivative. Well, yeah. I grabbed the wrong number. We were plugging in the 3 onto the 2, weren't we? Okay. 3 8. Next, we need to find? Derivative. Sorry, I just got dive bombed by a fly. Probably the same stupid fly that's been writing on my board all day. I couldn't figure out third hour. All of a sudden, I'm trying to do something on my board, and my board's just not responding. Not resp and I couldn't figure out what was going on. And then someone goes, there's a fly on your writing on your board. And I'm like, there we go. Okay. Okay, pop quiz. Derivative of 2 to the x. Mm -hmm. 2 to the x is 9 to the 1 over no. 2 to the x times 2. Is it 2? Not just times 2. It's not 2. Ln 2. This is the derivative we struggled with on that test. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Several. So it, it comes down to it's a derivative. Now that we struggled with it, maybe it wasn't in the review enough, maybe I didn't teach it well enough, I don't know. It just didn't pop up enough, is my thoughts. Okay, remember that? Okay, so now we need the derivative evaluated at 3. So 2 to the third times ln2, which is going to be 8 natural log of 2. Why do I not remember using that? Okay, I did use that, though. Okay, so my slope is the 8 natural log of 2. Okay. Can you write your linear approximation? And, again, I don't know. I sometimes get tired of writing that f of x is approximately equal to but there's L of X. So slope, which is 8 natural log of 2 times X minus, that's my X value, 3, and then plus 8. There is my linear approximation. And it says use the tangent line to estimate 2.97. So that means I'm finding L of 2.97. So 8 natural log of 2 times 2.97 minus 3 plus 8. I can do part of that in my head. How do we know when to use 3 and when to use 2? What? How do we know when to use 3 and when to use 2? So we use the 3 to write the tangent line. Okay, so we use the 3 to write the tangent line, so we use it to find our point and we use it to find our slope. The linear approximation is the equation of the tangent line at 3. Then, when it asks you to find the linear approximation of 2.97, that's plugging 2.97 into the equation we just wrote with the 3 because 2.97 is very, very close to 3. Okay? Okay. In my notes, I have written down 7.83364. And so what we're saying here is that f of 2.97, the actual function value, is approximately equal to L of 2.97, the linear approximation. And that linear approximation is 7.83364. And for reference, if I did 2 raised to the 2.97 power, 
I get 7.83536 Very close to that, isn't it? And they're not always that close, but that one's very close. It didn't ask me to find any amount of error, though, so we won't worry about that. Okay. Approximate 2.01 to the fifth. Use your calculator to find the accuracy of the approximation. Is the linearization an overestimate or underestimate? And explain. Okay. Some information was not bluntly provided here, but it's here. What function are we talking about? If we're trying to approximate 2.01 to the fifth. What does that mean our function is? Two to the fifth. Okay. Well, hold the thought of two. Two is the value we're going to use to write our linearization. The actual equation, though, instead of 2.01 or 2, where's my variable at? Is going to be x to the fifth. So the equa because it's 2.01 to the fifth, we're trying to approximate 2.01. And what is 2.01 very, very close to? That's very close to the 2 that you're coming up with, right? So we're going to use f of x equals x to the fifth at, or, yeah, at x equals 2. That's kind of the provided information that you kind of have to pull out of the details. Are you okay with that? Maybe, maybe not. Okay. So let's get the information to write the tangent line at this point, and we'll use it to approximate the 2.01 to the fifth. Okay. So first of all, what is f of 2? 2 to the fifth, which is 32. So that gives me the ordered pair. 2 comma 32, right? Jacob's got his power of 2's for me. You had to think about that one? Uh, well, when you become a math teacher, you know some of these random powers of, you know, powers of 2 pretty easily, so. Okay, derivative of f. Derivative of x to the fifth is going to be 5x to the fourth. I want to know what my derivative is evaluated at 2. So 5 times 2 to the fourth. Hmm? Uh huh. It is because it's 5 times 16, which is 80. And what is that 80? That is the slope at x equals 2. Okay. So, I'm going to run out of room real quick here. Yikes. Linear approximation. So, f of x is approximately equal to my linear approximation, which is slope of 80 times x minus 2 plus 32. So first of all, I guess it didn't technically ask for the linear approximation, but I feel like, okay, I need to, that's my linear approximation, so I know where to come back to it. Find, so we approx. We're going to approximate 2.01 to the fifth. So what's that mean I'm going to do? I'm going to find L of 2.01. So 80 times 2.01 minus 2 plus 32. This is something you can do in your head. 2.01 minus 2 is 0.01. When I do 0 0.01 times 80, that moves my decimal place two places. 
And so 0 0.01 times 80 is going to be 0 0.8. 0 0.8 plus 32. 32.8, right? Or, and I haven't made any mistakes there. So this is my approximation. So f of 2.01 is approximately 32.8. Okay. Error. I feel like I can't say that word very well, but. Use calculator to find the accuracy of the approximation. So we found our approximation to be 32.8. What was the exact value? Oh, we don't have that, do we? No. Okay, what she said, right? Do I have that written down somewhere here? Nope, I didn't even write that down. So, F of 2.01 is exactly what? Read that number again, Maddie. 32.80840401. Okay, something like that. It is. Now, so here's the difference, guys. We're looking at the error, so we're looking at the exact, the absolute value of the exact minus the approximate. So in order to do the error, we're going to do f of 2.01 minus the linear approximation at 2.01. So that's doing that 32 point, that number Maddie read, 8080401 minus... Our approximation was just 32.8. So we're subtracting those two values. And I just have it listed as approximately 0 0.08. I don't have any, excuse me, 0 0.008. There's obviously more past that, right? I don't have it written down. But do I know enough to tell me my amount of error? Your amount of error is less than oops, 10 to the what? Negative second, because there's two zeros there. So that's saying my error is or within two decimal places, so to speak. Okay? So pretty close. Now... That was used to calculate to find the accuracy of the approximation. Is this an overestimate or underestimate? This is an important concept to explain or understand. And in order to know if it's an underestimate or overestimate, I mean, I mean, I guess we can look at right here the actual versus the approximation, the estimate, right? And the fact that it's obviously slightly bigger, right? Or wait, no. Smaller. Smaller. Sorry. Struggling. Okay. Um, what happens here is if you look at the graph, and what I did is I graphed it, and then I really zoomed in on that piece. And when I zoomed in on that piece, I have a concave up piece. I have the idea that it's concave up. And when it's concave up, so if we're talking right there is 2, my tangent line is right there, then that means when I talk about 2.01, my approximation is going to be below the actual. And so thus it is an underestimate. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. 
So if I graph here, it's x to the fifth. And x to the fifth, you get like an x cubed graph, but kind of flatter at the origin. I know you guys can't really see that. But then if I put my cursor in the area of 2, well, I'm already up off the screen, I guess. But it's going to be, it's that piece, I don't want to say this. My graph is doing this, right? And so, like, this is 0, 0 right here. And so... 232 is way over here somewhere, but because of that, that officially is a concave up. Okay, so my tangent line is going to be, I didn't get it drawn exactly right, but right there next to it. Yes? So another way you could have found that was do the derivative of the derivative of the thing I'm plugging into, and if it's positive, then it's... Yes. Yes. In other words, basically do the second derivative, and if you evaluate the second derivative at 2 and find that that is a positive value, you know the graph is concave up. Yes. That is what Jacob said in not so many words. Okay. Your clues tell me I'm done. That's what I'm getting out of you guys. So I'm done. So I have, what, a front and back page to work through tomorrow. Okay. And that means Friday we get to venture into L'Hopital's rule. And that means we'll be looking at tests next week. Yeah. I would say towards the end, like Wednesday through Friday. Wednesday at the earliest, most likely Thursday. That's my guesstimate. Honey, did you like throw your phone in?